This video is going to focus on parabolas. What I have here listed are the essentials in order to graph a parabola. The leading coefficient, the axis of symmetry, the vertex, and the x and y intercepts. Right here is listed the standard form for a parabola. It is essentially a quadratic. A parabola, if it is a function, is going to open in one of two ways either opening up, as you can see here, or opening down, which is essentially a reflection. First thing to consider is the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient is essentially the coefficient of the term with x to the second power. And since this is written in standard form, it's usually written first. If this value is positive, expect the parabola to open upward. If, on the other hand, it is negative, expect it to open downward. Do not expect this to be zero. If this is zero, then what would happen is this entire term would be gone and we'd be left with a line. Next thing to consider is the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is essentially the line of reflection in which this parabola is divided. The points on one side are going to be equidistant to points on the other side. So simply knowing half the parabola will give you enough to help you figure out the rest of it. Now, of course, you can determine just about any points by doing a table or a chart. But what we will instead focus on are the uh, intercepts and the vertex. And that should be enough to help you draw this. The vertex is a critical point. It is the maximum or minimum point in which the parabola opens. This point is always located on the axis of symmetry. So until you have this point, you know that this parabola is somewhere on this line. But where exactly, you don't know. And until you locate the y-coordinate, because the x-coordinate will be the same as for the axis of symmetry, you won't know the precise location in which it opens. After that, you'll want to determine the intercepts. The y-intercept is probably the easiest. Just simply substitute 0 in for x. And whatever the result is will be where the graph crosses the y-axis. When we are written in standard form, this number here typically is it. Last but not least, the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts, you can have two of them, as we can see here. It is possible to have just one. And in that case, the vertex would be on the x-axis tangent to it. And it is possible to have none at all. Let's look at this one. Let's uh, first identify uh, the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient, you should notice, is right here. And because uh, we don't see one there, we assume that there's a 1. What is significant about it is that it is positive, which means that this graph is going to open upwards. So the parabola should look something like this. Now for the axis of symmetry. There is a formula for the axis of symmetry that you can use, and it comes from the quadratic formula. And here it is. x is equal to negative b over 2a. a, b, and c are the coefficients for each term. a is 1, so in this case, that would go underneath. b being negative 2 would go on top. So x equals 1. I'm going to graph the line x equals 1. x equals 1 simply means that it crosses the x-axis at 1. This is a dotted line, meaning it's not really there, but we draw it in there anyway to help us do the graph. Now remember, the vertex lies on this particular point. We know that this parabola essentially lies somewhere on here. It's cut in half somehow, some way, but where precisely, we don't really know. So to figure out the location of that point, we're going to have to take 1 and plug it into the equation. So f of 1, plug that in and we get 4, or negative 4. So that means that the vertex is located at 1, negative 4. So when you graph that, we know it's going to look something like that. Now, how exactly is this thing going to curve? Well, we're going to have to work that out by getting some more points. Let's start with the y-intercept. The y-intercept means that we're going to be plugging in 0 for x. 
Therefore, f of zero is going to equal negative three. Now notice that since this axis of symmetry is a mirror, if we have one point here, then if you count one unit, because it's one unit away from the line, if you count one unit in the other direction, we get another point. Now for the x-intercepts. That means that you're going to set y equal to zero. And please keep in mind, even though we have it here as f of x, you should probably better think of it as y equals. That might be better. So what you would do is you would set this equal to zero, and you would solve for x. You can solve for x either by factoring or by using the quadratic formula. In this particular case, we can factor, so let's do that. And in doing so, we get three or negative one. Notice that they are equidistant from the axis of symmetry, which is how it should work. Also notice that we knew that we were going to get two points to begin with because we know the vertex was down here and that it was going to open up. So that told us that we should have gotten two answers anyhow. And that's enough for a picture. Sometimes you may encounter a, a quadratic written in vertex form already. This is vertex form where you have a portion that has been com that is a complete square with an additional add-on and then another value that's been factored out out front. That value is the leading coefficient. The axis of symmetry can be gained by setting this inside equal to zero and solving for x and the vertex therefore would just simply be that answer for the x coordinate and then this number out here would be the y coordinate H and V, by the way, in case you're curious, I'm using that to mean horizontal and vertical. Here's an example. Graph f of x is equal to 2 times the quantity x plus 1 squared minus 2. Now, for this one, we want to again uh, determine these guys uh, in this particular order, starting off with the leading coefficient. Remember, the leading coefficient tells us if it's positive or negative. Or rather, it tells us whether or not it opens up or down. In this case, the leading coefficient is 2. Therefore, we know this opens up. So now the axis of symmetry. Well, you'll notice that I kind of have it drawn here, so you can guess what it is. The axis of symmetry, take this inside, x plus 1. If you set it to 0 and solve, you get x equals negative 1. Now, if you're curious why I'm using this 0, it is simply because the origin typically begins at 0, 0. So I'm using that simply as a reference. Again, please note that x equals 1, x equals negative 1, this axis of symmetry is a dotted line. Remember, it's not really there. We simply use it to help us draw our figure. So what's the vertex? Well, we already have the x-coordinate right here. The y-coordinate is right here. What you see is what you get for that. Therefore, negative 1, negative 2, is where the point is going to be for the vertex. And a word of note, you should be asking yourself, how many x-intercepts am I going to get? Well, since this opens upward, like so, we can expect two of them, because it's going to look something like that. I mean, how exactly it is, we don't know, but we do know this. It's going to hit it twice. So we know that we're going to have to solve for it somehow, some way, if we can. First, the y-intercept. Plug in 0 for x, solve, and we get 0, which means we also happen to know one of our x-intercepts. And because of symmetry, we also happen to know another one over here. But let's assume that we do not, and let's say that we had to solve for it. Since that's our equation, we're going to plug in 0 for y and solve for x. Take this 2 over here, because this is all one big deal here but the 2 isn't. We can add 2 to both sides. And then since we want the leading coefficient here divided out, divide both sides by this 2 here. So that gives 1. So what you have now is a completed square on one side. That allows us to square root both sides. Put your plus or minus sign on the side that's opposite the variable side. Square root of 1 is 1, so nothing there. But the square rooting here eliminates your squared, so now we can just isolate x by moving this 1 over here to the left-hand side. And a quick calculation gives us our answer. 
I again acknowledge this. There was nothing climactic about this. There was no point in doing this because we already knew what they were because of the y-intercept. However, I felt it necessary to go through this process because it doesn't always work out with the y-intercept being the same as the x-intercept. So now you have the process. But still, we need some more points. We only have three, as you can see. What I want to show you right now is the table of points that we have. This one here, the middle one, is the vertex. So you notice that with the x values, we're counting 0, negative 1, negative 2. We're counting downwards. These two points happen to be the intercepts. So what it would be nice is that if we had another, let's take another number and plug it in. Since we're counting down here, we can try plugging in negative 3, or we can count up and plug in 1 in for x. Either way works. Let's try negative 3. If you plug in negative 3 here, you get 2 times the quantity negative 3 plus 1 squared minus 2, and that would give us 6. Go ahead and graph that. And keep in mind this whole thing about symmetry, the distance from here to here, count two more spaces, and we get the other point. Notice if you'd plugged in 1 instead, you would have also gotten 6. So now we got some points. We have enough to graph this. And that finishes that. Okay, now let's go backwards. Here you're given a graph. Now find the equation. You'll notice that you're given the highest point here, the parabola. Notice you have the vertex. Therefore, why don't we use the vertex form? With vertex form, we can simply plug in what the vertex is, and then we can spend the rest of our time trying to figure out what the leading coefficient is. So let's first plug in that vertex. Okay. All we got to do now is figure out what the leading coefficient a is. Now something in general you should understand. If you're trying to find the equation of any <clears throat> line, curve, whatever, and you're missing something, if you have a point that's on that graph, just simply plug it in. Now we've already plugged in the vertex, so we wouldn't use that. Instead we'd use this other point, negative 5 comma negative 21. Replace this into x and y. So this is what we have. Negative 21 goes in for y, negative 5 goes in for x. Now let's solve for a. If you simplify within the parentheses, you get negative 3. If you subtract 6, you get negative 27. This becomes simply 9, divide by 9, and we get negative 3 for a. So that's it. Negative 3 is a. Plug that in. You're done. That's your equation. That's your formula. Now if you were asked to write this in standard form, you would FOIL this out and then multiply your negative 3 and collect terms. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.